at it again, you know, uh, X and YouTube censoring me yet again uh, today. So, you know, I had to uh, battle that. Um, I mean, it's almost uh, unprecedented, the censorship that I go through uh, sometimes with these social media platforms and whatnot. As you can see right here, uh, Twitter, Elon Musk's Twitter system has detected I violated the rules and I guess it's hateful to call Kamala uh, a tranny, the vice president, uh, because, you know, to be quite honest, she looks like a dude. I'm pretty sure she's not a woman. Um, so I'm just pointing this out. Kamala is a tranny and I guess that means you have no freedom of speech, right? So there is no more freedom of speech in America. Just all of this stuff does not exist like they claim it does. Uh, so that's that. And, um, you know, there it's always something, you know, uh, they got to be censoring me every step of the way. Um, I want to give a big thanks to anyone who's uh, shared out the show, anyone who's contributed to the show, um, help paying the light bills here. It's a big shout out to uh, just keeping this going because I'm so censored. Now, I battled YouTube uh, today and I publicly battled them and they actually backed down. They actually stripped away yesterday's show. They said, I absolutely cannot talk about civil war. They labeled it medical misinformation and stripped the show down on purpose because, you know, they can't have me out there talking about civil war and all this stuff. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, uh, you know, the levels that they go to, to, uh, to censor me. Um, and I posted that on my Twitter. People can look at it. I went back and forth with YouTube. Anyways, they finally reinstated my, uh, deal. And they said it was medical misinformation and that's how they were going to do it. And they were going to give me a strike. Right. So, What's up, Pam, Sean, Rusty, Ponch, Nemesis? What's up, Jeep, Adam, everyone in chat? Good to see you, Abel. Carol, thanks a lot, Pam, for helping getting that light bill paid. Excellent, excellent. Uh, also, Art, thanks, Art, and I appreciate that. So we're getting to the point of... Um, where it, I guess it's Friday, and I labeled the show Dogman and Fireball Friday, open line show, right? So 262-891-0070. I wanted to talk about Dogman, Bigfoot, and cryptid creatures, but what, more importantly, what do you think these creatures are? We're also going to cover some news and talk about the Devil Comet, and the Vatican has been tracking this and uh, other invisible objects with their Lucifer infrared telescope located in Arizona. All right. So, um, but these dog man, if you are not familiar with the dog man, um, a dog man's a, a cryptid creature and, uh, you know, they're probably they're nine to 12 feet tall. Um, they're, in fact, I'm going to put an image up of one right there. There's one holding a fireball. Now, um, these are powerful creatures that weigh 500 to 1200 pounds, something like that. And they're cryptid in it. Sounds ridiculous when you just hear about this on the surface. Just hearing about a dog man on the surface, literally 
sounds ridiculous, but I've listened to over 550 encounters now over the last probably four and a half, five years, something like that. And I realized that these, uh, there, there's something to these dog man and the, you know, they've always existed according to lore and stuff. And you've, you've heard these, um, stories going back into medieval times, right? I mean, just look at this magnificent creature. <laughs> so <clears throat> these stories go back quite a, quite a ways. And uh, I'm smoking real quick. Hold on. It's Fireball Friday. So these uh, creatures go back in lore, but also the military appears to be using them <coughs> according to modern eyewitnesses. And <coughs> I think it's fascinating, some of these accounts. But one account in particular on the Dogman... Uh, topic that is on the dogman and paranormal research with jeff nadalny you can check out his channel and uh but i'm gonna play a clip from this alleged and he sounds legit this dude sounds legit if you listen to this whole story uh but this guy claims to be a military former military contractor but he was a private contractor and he was working for a mine in Canada and uh, he was to secure this mine there was some problems around the mine and uh, they got a call to where you know someone was pinned in this uh, building by a dog man and so they went they're real heavily armed and they went out uh, to this site and I'm just going to play a little bit of this for a, while, a little bit and we'll listen to it and then we'll take call-ins at 262-891-0070 people can chime in on this um you're welcome to call in and if you call in you can call in and get on the line and just stay there if this is still playing and then when i introduce you you can come on so here we go hey, I just it had cleared about half the distance to us and it was not moving much anymore and it was not very intact uh much more intact than it should be but it was no longer what i consider a threat and trevor ran over to the other aa gunner and grabbed a drum off him and reloaded and, oh wait uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna rewind it still um it, yeah it was we were mostly slightly stunned i mean I know a lot of people get freaked out and think this is the biggest event in their life. I know, I think it was just shy of that by the time we were done with it. Uh, okay, right here. And with its right uh, limb, arm, whatever you want to call it. They encountered this dog man. It was wildly. It was pulling it back, almost like a reverse punch that somebody does in like basic karate and slamming its palm forward into it. And it was also making this sound that sounded like somebody breaking a six inch dried pine branch while I was doing that. Um, we jumped out and we had both of the vehicles turn around 180 so we could have an exfil in case things went bad. That's just standard protocol. None of us were spooked. I mean, what we have, we have six M4s with a 203A underneath with a uh, CNC or Claymore in a can. It's a giant 40 Dang. millimeter shotgun round for the uh, uh, under slug launcher because we can't use grenades and we don't want to set the place on fire. It's just silly. Oh. And great for being ambushed because a 40 millimeter canister round will turn a bear into vapor at six feet. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> the guns themselves were five, five, six, and the shotguns I explained earlier. So we just panned out in two lances to either side so we wouldn't actually have a direct fire onto the building itself in case the thing came out. Joel is in my lance, and he actually is our long shot. He sighted up on it with the Times 4 scope. We're approximately 50 yards at this point, and the team leader said, just take it down, take it down, take it down. So Joel popped off 2556 directly into the head, 
But before he did that, he's like, something's fucked up here. He's my language, and that's a direct that's quote. Crazy, huh? And we were like, okay, whatever. Uh, we weren't too worried. He popped two rounds into that thing. He definitely hit. The thing didn't roar or scream or do anything you would typically think, run off. It actually went down on all fours directly facing us That's very crazy. quickly and almost seems to collapse in on itself or compact. And the odd thing I noticed at that point was just seconds before the next event was that that thing didn't reflect. I'm going to pause that for a second. Now, there he's saying that this thing went down on all fours and it looked like it went in on itself and compacted. So these dogmen, they can stand bipedally on two feet uh, upright. Uh, and when that process happens, there's a lot of um, popping and hissing that happens sometimes in reports. And this is weird because that's a, uh, that was depicted in old like Scooby-Doo werewolf cartoons and stuff. And this is what a lot of um, people talk about with this dog man. But he says this thing was so loud uh, when it hit, it did this uh, air release noise. That's what other people have described it like a uh, stabbing of a tire or something. Um, and the air hisses out. But he says it was like really loud. Uh, let's put this guy back on. Light. It was almost like that the black paint we have nowadays that absorbs all the light. You know what yeah. I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. It was just, I couldn't see any definition there. You know, normally you have some reflection. No. Um, or at least depth of field or some indicator of separation of body so you have some field of depth in what you're observing does that make sense yep okay so i was thinking that for maybe just a second and it let out a hiss and this isn't like a cat hiss or anything it sounds like somebody venting an lng pipeline like a liquid natural gas pipeline like an emergency vent okay. i that's the closest thing i can describe it you've not heard it it's unimaginable and talking to this uh, somebody else uh, recently i did remember that that actually locked us all up <laughs> we are not super hardened veterans but we've done a lot of crazy stuff in a lot of countries at this point and we're well versed in what we do but uh yeah that's something that in retrospect locked us up and Just kind of stopped you guys immediately huh yeah, it wasn't info sound. Uh, it was just so unexpected. Right. It's tense. Um, it really uh, was unsettling. It's not what you expect. Yeah. It's, it's wrong. Yeah, you're seeing some sort of creature, and you're you're thinking it's going to roar. It's going to make some sort of noise, maybe like a bear or something. And all of a sudden, it's letting out this completely abnormal sound. That yeah, I can understand it. Yeah, I believe if I had been within eight feet of that, yes, it could have caused ear damage. I mean, it literally sounded like a decompressing LNG line, which is worse than an airline popping in a garage by a factor of a thousand. Wow. Um, that was what kind of locked us up, but then it made more of what you would expect, but it sounded like a cross between a tube and throat singer, like that Mongolian stuff, a roar and a cat all at once. And yeah, I know that broke that that broke us free of whatever that was lockup was and i don't think it caused the lockup i just think we were just so what the it just saw and it jumped it jumped far uh and i don't have my immediate These things can jump. The exact distance i think it was around 18 yards i know i think it was just shy of that by the time we were done like 50 feet um Trevor lit it up with a a12 first which is the shotgun and the rest of us just opened up and we just kept going until we were bingo it didn't make it much further uh, normally, they during the a clip. fire event Rip like this, one person clip. from each lance is supposed to hold back, so we have somebody to provide suppression or cover while we reload. And I must admit, fire discipline that day went to complete smash. We all emptied everything to bingo. Every all we had, even all six of us at M4s fired off the 203A canister round, and that thing still. It got shredded and after we lit it up, but then it started trying to push itself up on its two arms and we were already reloading pretty quick and we didn't have the big snail clip on there anymore because we had just spent it. Uh, so yeah. we just put in round after round from a couple magazines out of everybody. Trevor managed to get another drum magazine back on and fill it up, at which point that thing ceased movement. Um, yeah, that was a little odd. I, wow. 
No, I did not like it. I really didn't. Sorry, I'm going to take a break here for a second. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, I hit pause. No, he's going to end up describing so, some of this musculature yeah, and I, stuff on I, this creature. That is. And I want you guys to listen. I, and I, um, people can chime in if y'all want to call in on this. This is a dog man that they a shot firefight. in a firefight. Uh, 262. 891-0070. Um, was there a lot of blood? Was there... Listen oh, to this. To that. <laughs> what he talks about with the blood. You know, how was everybody's crazy. demeanor at that point? Um, and the military shows up like a team. And caution. COVID. And backed up a little bit about 10 yards. We could hear the guy in the shed screaming still. Um, it, yeah, it was... We were mostly... Slightly stunned. I mean, I know a lot of people get freaked out and think this is the biggest event in their life. I've seen other things that haunt my sleep and not this, but this was definitely weird. And when or I've encountered weird before and after, mm. I, you just go bingo on your ammo and light it up and solve weird. And it, I, I mean, physically, if you do the math, we probably hit 27 to 47 tons worth of kinetic force into this creature. Yeah. If you calculate all the bullet impact. How, the many, that, how many rounds did you spend on this thing? Let's see, that'd be 75 rounds on a snail clip for each M4, 6203A, Claymore in a can, canister rounds, rounds. That would be... 32 double lot and 32 triple lot, which is gi three giant ball bearings in, in the, the two. Those are just if you've never heard of triple lot. And that was, and then we, our snails are dry. We went to standard clips. We each emptied a couple mags a piece into it, our clips, whatever. People are going to make a big deal about that temperature too. Oh, it, from the M4s, Trevor managed to get another drum onto his AA-12 and emptied a whole nother drum onto it, which was unnecessary, but that's Trevor. Now, the uh, drum really quick, is that, that's 32 or 30? 32 pounds. It's called an AA-12 yeah. or an Atchison assault rifle. I mean, Atchison assault shotgun. Hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, you can get a straight clip for it too. Um, so you know, like I said, we just had big. We'll let this guy talk a little more in a little bit, but he gets into the musculature and the inner workings of this dog man. And what he talks about is almost like amazing how the legs can almost like extend on a track like there's bones like inner track and they can like extend and stuff so um i'm gonna play more of this just listen to it if you all want to call in call in the numbers on the screen um you know it's pretty uh, interesting it's up there to be fearsome to keep other people off the mine and prevent any engagement. You know, right. you might want to start engagement with a couple security guards with handguns, but you don't want to play with a contract group. So and we were, yeah. we really didn't need that stuff. And everybody's like, why'd you take all the heavy equipment for a bear? And we're like, because it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I have to say it, but you know, you find your fun where you can. Well, we're not like you said, you guys were, you guys were immature you know i mean you guys got all these great toys why not use them exactly and i mean uh so everybody else wants to be all these hardened super badass individuals and i'm sorry i don't believe in those <laughs> but excuse me here i'm going to take a quick sip of water and continue okay at this point it had cleared about half the distance to us and it was not moving much anymore and it was not very intact uh much more intact than it should be but it was no longer what i consider a threat mm -hmm. and trevor ran over to the other aa gunner and grabbed a drum off him and reloaded and uh, we approached uh, just so we didn't have interfering fields of fire to come and try to secure it and once we felt that it was not a threat even though there was some um, micro motion and movement the other lance went to the squirt box to actually get the guy out and uh he was incoherent and inconsolable so one of the i was the actual medic for our lance we had another medic in the other lance they he just hit him with field morphine and dropped him i mean it was the kindest thing we could do at that point without causing him to hurt and we needed to secure the area that may not sound very nice but 
I thought it was a mercy. So it's not, it didn't kill much. Please, we're just trying to sedate this individual and keep them from being interruptive and a danger to right. themselves. Um, after the Exo was taken guy. care of, uh, the TL team leader was on the squirt box and he was sending out emergency messages. That's when I got my first look at the creature itself. Like I said, I'm the medical individual for us. And I saw make no sense. It was, all right, there's not blood. Um, there is goop everywhere. It's a gray viscoid pearlescent goop. The hmm. bone structure, not a single bone was broken. Nothing. And that bone should have been broken because mammalian bones have about the structural similarity to green alder. Hmm. In fact, they use green alder in test crashes in the major break zones to like femurs and ribs to emulate the exact fracture systems. Um, none of the bones broken. I mean, except the upper face and a couple pieces here and there. But uh, they were more of a same tone of color, a grayish pearlescent um I can't really describe the color, truthfully. It just seemed to have some traceries of possibly green or purple or something in them. But the strange thing that was odd to me was the smell. The smell isn't like the stuff you hear about all these other people. It's not like ours. This stuff hit like smelling salts, if you've ever had a smelling salt. It was like a very strong ammonia scent. Well, it hit like it. It okay. would be smelling salt, but the scent wasn't exactly the same. There is a slight ammonia to it or... But there was something else that I did not recognize at all. Okay. At that point, I was kind of worried about a hazmat exposure, but I figure as long as we don't touch it, we should be okay. And if it's going to get us through respiration, we're already exposure. screwed. So, so uh, that, I mean, anyway. he, he's seen inside this thing, he's seen what appears to not be blood, um, supposedly. I mean, this is what this guy is claiming. Now, um, he says the bones are, are almost like a compound, like green alder, like they're super strong, basically. I find well, that take weird. A look at it, and nothing made sense. I mean, it's like an emulation of a mammalian structure or a vertebral structure, but there's a lot of things that did not make sense. It had no urogenital tract. It had no excretory system. Um, hmm. The pulmonary area that was actually like more of a giant heart-shaped sac, which filled up most of the uh, upper torso, and there was no way in or out of it. It's almost like that mouth, in, late, in retrospect, not at the time, was almost like the, the, uh, This cool. is weird because, and this is why I chose uh, this account to play, because I'm wondering if there's some type of cloned or weaponized dogman versus like a natural one because there's dogman stories where they've urinated and stuff this guy's saying like this thing doesn't have a track for that and it this guy sounds kind of suspect but parts of me believe him too let's let's keep a uh, listening bones ghost says this guy's full of shit bones ghost <laughs> bones he might be on to something. Let's listen to this. This is Fireball and Dogman. Dogman and Fireball. system, like it was a one, one track system. Well, as a track system, everything goes in and out. Yeah. But it, even oxygen or if it breathes, I didn't really see any exchange. Another immediate thing I noticed was that the, uh, oh man, it, it's called the abdominal pelvic quadrants, you know, where you look at the left upper, right upper, right lower, left lower, and they're divided into other regions. I mean, I should be seeing intestines in the right lumbar, umbilical, left lumbar, left iliac, hypogastric, and right iliac area, but there's nothing there but these weird punctured, almost like chain of pearl cyst tumors that are connected. Hmm. So this, is, this is a complete lack of a better word. This is alien to you guys and to you, especially as being a medic, you're, you're, you're at a kind of a. He's saying, and this thing. guy could be disinfo could too. Be we don't know. Uh, but he's saying this but particular dog man you could identify had like a weird parallels in system in his body. Uh, symmetrical. It had other artifacts. It's like 
an imitation or a simulacra of what something should be. It, I don't think it was manufactured. I don't believe in aliens. A lot of people hate me for that, but I believe in Hermes paradox. I'm, you, you can convince me it came from an alternate dimension before you can convince me it came from space. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, no, it's, I, you know, it's, I just not to cut you off on your. Can Bigfoot and uh, Dogman come it's, from alternate dimensions? So this guy's he's going to give a, a breakdown. It's a bunch of um, technical <laughs> jargon and stuff, but he makes it sound like this creature is uh i guess virtually like created or 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 something um by the military now he says a special team shows up on site to round this thing up which isn't abnormal i mean this is i've heard this in many other stories but what's weird about this guy's story is he says this team has this big jaws of life type system and that's what they're chopping it up with and um this is a um well bones it wasn't really a firefight so it's not like the thing was shooting back at them they basically so this thing had a guy pinned in a building and they showed up and they just unloaded on it and they were heavily armed and then they went up to it and did some type of inspection this is what this guy's claiming i thought about some of this it sounds wild and then parts of me um think it could possibly be true but i don't know uh, i fast forward it now a little bit let's see what he's saying that might be anthropomorphizing there but that's the closest i can equate it to right right now you said that it's it's head and face were were damaged can you uh kind of I saw the picture you drew. His head and face were damaged, he said. Can you, According to him. I mean, this is all a legend. It's like, we don't know. Uh, it's going to be hard. Just uh, 20 years ago or, or something like that. I mean, geez. Like, was there a muzzle? Was there a muzzle? Um, how, it, best you can compare the face to. Um, the face was strangely... Excuse me here. I'm going to take a quick break. Yeah, take the time. You know, the face is weird because uh, that's a composite drawing. Joel was the one who had the best view of the face because he took the first two shots and he was looking at it. The rest of us were just standing I'm by. I'm going to fast forward it just a little bit more. Maybe a charge from a bear. Unloading on it and then having to reload and then unload again. And, you know, wondering, is this thing going to drop? What's going on? I figured it was going to drop, and I mean, I was about, I mean, and if it didn't, we could, they'd already staged the vehicles to Exville, and uh, good uh, point, I felt man. Uh, we had left that poor guy in there, but uh, he called it, it a clip. It happened too fast to even think. It's just, it jumped, we lit it up, um, and we lit it up again, and then all of a sudden it's over. And then we're just doing what we got to do. Bones, call so in if, uh, if I mean, you want to chime in on this. I'd be surprised if it lasted more than seven to 11 seconds. 262 891 0070. They didn't even need slow motion. I'm sorry, everybody says slow motion. And it was terrifying. It's just like I've been ambushed a lot. And I'm not saying, oh, I'm a badass. I'm saying my limbic system and reactions have been. So this guy, you know, it's a weird story. Um, He's. A lot, you know, a, a lot of people were are giving him uh, black on his terminology. I mean, that could, but he did explain in the beginning of the video that he's not military; he's a contractor, and there's a difference. Um, but I don't know. You know, I mean, that could just be his way of like passing this off. But the the thing is, is like, so there's this other guy. A uh, guy who claims to be a dogman hunter for the government, or like a uh, almost like a handler, okay. And uh, he says that he has to go out on these hunts and all this stuff, and that the government has these dogmen. They have a certain amount. They patrol the border. They, I mean, it's like almost like bizarre. And also, could that be the disinformation? 
campaign that goes along with the dog man like is there just a legitimate flesh and bones dog man and you actually got agents out there doing disinfo to make this sound crazy or is there something to it what's up you're on the air who's this yo man it's bones hey bones what do you think about this isn't it wild ah uh yeah man i mean dude i'm sitting there listening to it and you know my background so i mean from way back but just his tone the way it is scripted Mm -hmm. man if you walk in i don't care some of the hardest pipe hitters in the world man you walk in there's a dog man standing there got somebody pinned on the ground there's no way a field medic is going to do an autopsy. (laughs) (laughs) Nope. And I'm sorry, the AA-12, it looked good in all the movies, man, but uh, no. (laughs) Yes, they do have a drum or a magazine when he called it a clip. I mean, there's one of your giveaways, but those things were very unfield tested and reliable when he's, uh, what he's talking about, they get, no. No, 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 not a good, good uh, commentary, Bones. I like that. Uh, you know, I, I, I agree. Like, I, I feel like some of, you know, some of his weapons talk seems a little off. He seems to be real knowledgeable in the medical side of it, but I'm not. So he could, you know, he could be making that part up too. Uh, if anyone else wants to call in 262-891-0070, anything else you want to say about this or dogmen in general, uh, Bones? Do you think they're real? Do you think it could be possible? Uh, do you think this guy's some type of disinfo thing? You know, like, what do you, what do you think's uh, going on? I, uh, that one there, man, I mean, hey, anything's possible, brother. And, you know, I ain't discounting anything there's too much strange stuff in this world <laughs> yeah uh, crazy huh you know hey I, I i did want to touch base with you real quick man uh you had a guy call in last night was talking about all the different arms yeah uh, and, and he was talking about the post office yeah yeah dude that's the postal inspector unit that's the postal police they handle anything that's like postal and all that other okay so i guess yeah they got federal jurisdiction but no but, there is no standing army in the postal service i promise you <laughs> hey did you uh know there's a devil comet coming and it's gonna uh coincide with the april 8th total solar eclipse and the vatican's tracking it with their lucifer yeah i've seen that man it, it's uh, all kinds of stuff uh, it's uh everything's happening like fuck it just boom 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 so hold on to your head fasten your seat belt and get ready to roll man. <laughs> Woo. all right man all hey right, man. thanks for the call Have bone good night, brother. you too uh-huh. brother Later. fireball friday all right uh kevin Morin, what's up what's going on my man oh not much Bye. you know just uh uh, waiting for this devil comet to come wondering if this this story is always one that uh has fascinated me because it's different from other dogman stories and um i wanted to kind of get people's opinions on it because it's it's like okay this one makes it sound sound like a dogman's almost mechanized or something or some type of weird um you know, like its internal um, parts aren't made of normal blood and all. Uh, what are what are your thoughts on that? Well, the guy that makes the famous talks about hunting them, and there was a breeding program for them. You know, they, some of them got out, some of them they ain't all bad. I mean, I've heard one where the contractor would said that it. You know, he had to kill one that was helping a village that didn't have food. He was bringing them food, and the village were like, no, you ain't killing it. And he was like, well, that's my orders. And they're like, all right. So, like, three days go on, and he had a last meeting with them, and he knew he had a chopper park close that when he shot this thing, they were coming for him. So, you when you're, like, saying mechanized, yeah, you don't know what they've done to alter these things. Man, Our that's mate. crazy. That's crazy to think about if they, if they, if, 
if if this guy's some somewhat uh, even remotely telling the truth about what he saw on the inside of this thing, if if any of this is even real, that's crazy. Uh, I'm going to fast forward it a little more and push play here in a minute. But what do you think of this devil comment? Because they're saying this horn devil comment, which if you think about it, that's the description of planet Nibiru. The winged disc, it's known to be like a horned winged disc. Um, and they're saying that this thing could actually photobomb or get in the way of this April 8th total solar eclipse. And they're literally calling it the devil comet. And then the Vatican named their telescope Lucifer, and they did that for a reason. And they're searching for infrared object, you know, objects through infrared, highly invisible. And also, it makes me wonder if they're looking for this devil comet. Is is that the reason that, like, some of these states have already declared state of emergency? Your home state, Arkansas, has already declared one. Yeah. For that. I mean, they, they do it under the guise of, oh, there's going to be so many people, or maybe the internet might go down. And do you know what I mean? You never know. You never know. Because it is on Instagram. There's a lot of shit that's lining up to this solar eclipse, you know? Yeah, dude, it's crazy. It's crazy. I'm going to push play on this dog, man. You can stick on the line if you want. If you want. In another way, Paralyte, but it also has almost a um, Neanderthalic appearance, but not quite. Right. Um, but then you also, in... Joel swears to this, and I can't. He said it had whiskers like a rat. Hmm. And I think the nose depicts the best argument between us of what we had come up with. <laughs> yeah. Um, the teeth, it doesn't put out as much. Uh, so I'm less I would than an hour? Here, they did not exceed 90 minutes. Wow. Oh, okay, here he's talking about the teeth. Yeah, you know, Everything got together. All right, here we go. Guys, what this is from lab work? It's a nitrogen canister or an inert gas. Okay. Sam's, he's a swear. Here we go. And he was uh, identified himself, and I'm just—I never heard of you. Um, and I mean, I need confirmation. You're not from our company. And he's like, rolled his eyes, and I was like, I pulled the TL over. TL went over and confirmed everything. And we were given directions to assist, and we we're like, okay. And so they brought out a miniature, not like miniature, miniature, but probably half scale jaws of life uh, with little power unit. Two guys are carrying the front and two guys are carrying the power unit. They walk up to the corpse and they just start cutting that thing up. And once they get that thing set up next to it, two of them go back to the helicopter and take down the hoop barrels, the, the barrels on the hoop holders on the back. And they're the blue bio barrels. They're, you know what I'm talking about? They're blue rounded barrels with locking uh, hoop staves on. Yes. Them. Yep. Yeah. They're pretty there. And those are the non reactive plastic uh, hazmat type. I have a hazmat background, so I knew what I was looking at. So I don't know what that was, is. But they put those down on the ground. They were cutting mid bone on everything. They were just sectioning this. This was not a dissection. Uh, this was not careful. Was this was fast <laughs> expedient. And so they use this thing. jaws of life thing and they section this thing up, <laughs> supposedly. And then this military team like got out of there and they <laughs> they only took ninety minutes. He said. Hey, just for future reference, when you, the Skype calls going. I don't hear the audio from whatever you're playing. Oh, I do, really? I, because I, I oh. have technology. Do oh, other oh, shit. Okay, right. I I know what you're saying. Like if somebody calls in and you go, hey, what do you think about this? They're going to be like, well, I don't hear they shit. They don't know. Okay. So he was basically saying this team showed up and in 90 minutes they had this thing cut up and out of there and they came in on helicopter. Um, so <laughs> I don't know, but you know it it's interesting because people have uh said things like oh i've heard doors open in the woods that sound like huge metal doors like like a dog man is coming out of like a a military type door or something and then that's when they had like an encounter 
you know, um, and that that's in the LBL. That's that's actually like been said a couple times by a couple uh, eyewitnesses, and I find that suspicious. Like, like could the military train a dog? Like, if if you think about like how trainable a dog is, let's say this guy was uh, full of shit. And um, the mechanical one that he was talking about with the weird blood is not real. But let's say these things are real, like the more physical flesh and blood type. That's what a lot of people believe. They don't think they're a werewolf where because a werewolf's like another thing where it transforms from a human. People think that dogmen don't do that. They're just like a physical flesh and blood creature. So... Um, you know, could you train a creature like that? Would it be trainable? And also, uh huh. Maybe one came through, they got a hold of it. That's where we get to uh, like the infrasound technology that the government has. The same shit that these supposed uh, wolf, dog man, they've been called so many things. Yeah. Really you know what I'm saying? But maybe they tried to like modify it like uh dog soldiers you know i mean all these phrases and shit and they you know now we're on robots everybody wants to make robots but what if some of these things that are advanced got out like that one contractor story on the dog man that i heard he was going in to kill these things and there was like a hundred, mm. 138 of them living in one place. It's not just like they were like one just running around. But you, when you were talking about like the metal sounds and shit and people yeah. hearing that, it makes me think that when, I mean, you've seen the old uh, Stargate, the TV. Stargate, yeah. Like when Stargate would lock in the metal sound. I can't, I can't go into all the different chevrons on the Stargate until it would open up to whatever world we're dialing into. So what if the metal town isn't the fucking Stargate? Okay. That's what they're hearing when it's uh, getting ready to go. Oh, dude, that's a trip. Like that Stargate shit lining up or something like some kind of device or something. Now, uh, oh. Now that you talk about that, Stargate actually ties into uh, Egypt and Anubis. And there's like stories around where they're saying like uh, Saddam Hussein had Stargate technology and that's what we were going after. And then I found in some WikiLeaks documents that they had these real things called Stargate Nine Line Teams when they did that incursion called Operation Planet X in in the first Gulf War invasion. And um, I just find that all weird, man. Like, does this all, you know. Okay, everybody always goes, we went to war with Iraq on false premises. Yeah. George told us that there was weapons of mass destruction there, right? But no missiles were ever found. Right. They didn't stash and no nuclear weapons or anything that could destroy the world. Mm -hmm. But maybe they maybe they did, if you know what I'm getting at. Yeah, dude. Like like where are uh where you never were went these? To yeah. <laughs> you know for that one. I mean, think about what I know he's he's tied to the most elite family. <laughs> That does all the dirty work, but I'm just saying, nobody ever talked about somebody will just make the claim just to put it out there so people that really talk about it go, oh, yeah, somebody's already mentioned that, you know, or that he's never going to go to jail. But yeah, he never went to jail. Maybe he wasn't lying when he says, we're going over there because Saddam Hussein has a weapons of mass destruction. They went over there and got something else because they never got a, they. They could have faked a missile. They could have did so much shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Back then, people would have bought anything if they videotaped. Look what he had down in the basement. They didn't even do that. Right. Why? And think about it. Everybody yeah. goes, oh, they did that because 
they're so stupid and everybody's so dumb. Well, maybe they didn't. Maybe they did go get something that probably could tear up the world, whatever he had over there. Wow. Yeah, I believe that uh, definitely um, something else was going on. They definitely were going after some technology. You know, in the city of Detroit, there's this weird park and uh, people say it has a Stargate, but it clearly looks like a Stargate, but I don't know if it's actually functional. And um, it's, it's almost like the strangest thing. And, you know, Detroit is built on top of essentially old Tartarian ruins and you know does that somehow tie in is there really uh stargates what you know remember i was talking about that tunnel um that went from like uh france to uh new york or something they were saying in the mainstream you could look through it and then they're saying it's like technology that one to the other side yeah yeah they're saying you can like see to new york and they at first they were saying it's this real old project that never got finished and it looks all tartarian but then they're acting like they did it with new technology and i find it weird and i'm wondering like like how bizarre um it, it just looked like really out of the ordinary you know um but shit, it's Fireball Friday. Uh, how was your week, man? Uh, it was shitty, dude. It felt like two weeks, Shepard, to be honest with you. But it's all right. We made it through it. Like everybody needs to keep pushing forward. Shout out to the chat. But you, you know the statue that's in front of CERN? Uh, I don't remember it offhand, what it looks like or anything. Pull it up. I mean, in case somebody don't know, I'm pretty sure maybe 90% of your audience know where I'm going with this. But the statue that's out front, that's uh, Shiva, and she's the goddess of death. But I just want you to look that up, and I'm going to just put this out there. Doesn't that look like she's standing in a stargate? Yeah, right. Yeah. And so CERN could be like a portal or a Stargate. Um, that could be what they're doing with that. Wow. <laughs> what yeah. if they're bringing demons through portals or something, you know? Or Dogman shit, like Anubis and all this shit. Why don't we ever see any protests outside CERN? Why isn't nobody going, hey, man, you need to shut this shit down. You're going to blow up the world, blah, blah, blah. There's nothing. Tell me the news stories. All I see is every now and then because I uh, subscribe to them on Twitter whenever they do some kind of stupid research. They, they put out shit every now and then. But, yeah. I mean, this, nobody really covers fucking CERN. But everybody's, you know, it's all conspiracy theories and it's just a bunch of scientists, which uh, if you believe scientists, <laughs> I think the last four years would prove, you, you know, there's something up with them dudes right now. <laughs> and these are the guys that are down there. You never hear nobody that works there coming on like Joe Rogan. I work at CERN. This is, no, Where, where's the information at? There ain't even like a Bob Lazar from CERN. I've seen no one come out and say, I, I work there and... There's some shit going on and I'm out because, you know, <laughs> there would be, there should be, but where are they at? No, I haven't seen one. Have you? No, look at this. Uh, they're talking about, this guy's talking about the uh, mysteries of CERN and the spiritual realm. So there's people like questioning, um, you know, what's CERN for, you know, they were a lot of these tech guys in, uh, California. Where's all the guys, listen, where's all the guys that built CERN? Right. Because it took them, when they start building it, what year did they start building it? It, it took like 50 years to build this motherfucker. And That's... all of a sudden, one day, hey, CERN's firing up. Uh, it's in Switzerland, five mile tunnel, electro pro. Well, is this like, because we don't know, we don't know if anybody's been in there. The, right. The, the photos and shit we see a sign that could just be something that 
they're showing you what is actually showing is you know they they have guys walking down the tunnel with the tube and shit. Come on, man, you can film anything. Is is CERN actually old technology that was here? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the whole scientist bullshit is just to cover up the fact because for 50 years, you know, how long did it take them to build it? I mean, seriously. Uh, I don't know, but I was. I pulled we up this. What, four years ago. Uh, five years. Where was all the old like uh? It show me Bill Cooper talking about CERN, and this would be like. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, show me some old footage of somebody talking about CERN's really a bad thing, because it took them that long to build it. There had to be contractors there. And they, for it's twenty-seven years. kilometers long, um, yeah. sir. And it took over a decade. They're saying, "Where's all the workers? Like the workers that worked on? Uh, some of them spoke out about the Denver airport. Uh -huh. I was, you know, where's the people from CERN talking out? What I mean, I like the first when CERN when it first came online before they did the initial test. I there were some kind of people that came out and was saying." Hey man, I ain't working there. There's ghosts down there. There's fucking they're like entities and shit. That's what I heard be, be, before they could fire it to full capacity. That is the only shit that I heard out of there. Was a couple people kind of like, and then it just disappeared. And then uh, other scientists are like, "Hey man, they could open up a black hole, you know, and swallow the whole world. This is a big deal." But still, we hear no reports. Uh, you know, they, uh, they're looking for the God particle. What? <laughs> that is, how much money does it take to run this motherfucker? Think about that. Where is the CERN project funding? It could Ooh. just be a tunneling. They're boring all these tunnels with the money and it's just underground base shit or something. What if CERN is just a, a big fucking money machine? And it just it's nothing. And it doesn't do fucking anything. It's styrofoam. It's like a cardboard inflatable. Yeah, like the whole. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, work, show me a video like workers building this motherfucker underground under Switzerland. And then where's the Switzerland people talking about? Yeah, it goes right under my house. <laughs> I mean, you know I'm saying? there should be some kind of videos out there like that. Hey, I'll, I'll check into it. I'm gonna do a show on CERN. Maybe tomorrow I should do it. Uh, maybe early. I'll do an early show on CERN, and we'll check into this more. I know a lot of people have checked into CERN, but maybe we'll get into some of the other aspects because uh, it's fascinating, and maybe it ties into the Underground Railroad somehow. I was thinking about something. I might put that in a show. Uh, all right, guys, we're out of time. I watched uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the newer one, uh, the other night, and it, it was uh, freaky. <laughs> it kind of scared me. I don't watch that many movies, though. It had a leather face on it, and uh, they went to this town, and in the town, I guess they were going to, like, refurbish this town or something, and they all showed up in a bus, and the dude was there and he, oh God, I have nightmares that night. All right, guys. Uh, we'll check out some more. We'll check out some stuff on Stern and have some more Dogman uh, Fireball Fridays and get into some other Dogman stories. Hit the like button, the donate, the share, all that. Thanks to anyone who has donated. I couldn't do it without you. Uh, it's definitely like a team effort. My voice isn't doing that good today. So, uh, but I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Um, I'll be back on. I'm signing out for now.